So today we're taking a look at number three in the top 10 of major nonconformities found in IETF 16949 audits undertaken globally within the last 12 months. And this nonconformity is 8.3.5.2 manufacturing design process output. So Devon, I wonder if you can just give us a little bit of insight as to this requirement. A little bit of background behind this requirement is basically your manufacturing process design outputs uh, can be validated against requirements and meet automotive requirements. And, and obviously within ITF 16949, we have a requirement that defines what should be the inputs into the manufacturing process design. And obviously there should be some correlation between the inputs and the outputs. So now, why do you think this requirement, the design part of ITF 16949, comes out so high in the major nonconformities? Such a, an important part of what an organization does. This is them really investing the time up front ahead of production to get everything in place such that the transition into production can be smooth and effective and that requires again it's the it's the sort of cultural approach of the organization that commitment to prevention to really working hard to get everything ready for production i think as well in this particular requirement it's all part of what we would think of as sort of new product introduction uh, we sometimes hear it referred to as advanced product quality planning apqp this type of activity that we do up front. I think there are other cases in here, Paul. So there are some very specific requirements in here around having an FMEA, for example. So one of the outputs would be a, a manufacturing process FMEA. And that's a very clear, specific requirement. And, and I suspect that's a, a, one of the areas where some organizations uh, fail. Yeah. And I've, I've seen that uh, in, in audits that while organizations might have uh, a generic process FMEA, they don't consider the risks in any new aspects of the process that have been introduced through the, the product that is yeah. being through the new product introduction uh, process. Um, Devon, so do we think the responsibility for doing all of this should fall on the quality department within an organization? It needs to be cross-functional, uh, not just the quality department. And they really need that cross-functional team to bring everyone together to understand how this process is going to work and make sure they meet the customer requirements. Yeah, and I think that is a common problem in, in many organizations, that there's not a true cross-functional approach. Maybe it is too much led by the quality function. But when we look at the scope of the requirements in 8.3.5.2, we do see things like if we're introducing new equipment we don't want to wait until that equipment is fully utilized in production we want to develop maintenance plans for how we're going to maintain that equipment in in optimum condition now have you anything to add about why you think this is so high in the list of major nonconformities, um, I think you know the other thing that I would say, Paul, is it, it, yeah, this is sort of risk-based thinking. This is all of the prevention work that is crucial for an organisation to again move into the production phase with that level of confidence. And it's a there's a lot going on in this area of, of as I say, new product introduction. And and in a way, it's highlighting, frankly, that organisations aren't always very good at investing. Um, the time and the effort again as Devin said in a cross-functional manner to really work on prevention before um, they move into the manufacturing phase and I think that's what the non-conformities are you know that seeing it this high up in the top 10 and these are global figures as well so yeah. uh, it's highlighting a big issue out there. And do we think that this requirement would only apply if we were bringing in new brand new technology, for example, or if we've got a, a product that is slightly different from an existing product that we are going to manufacture for a customer? Should we still apply the principles of this clause within the management system? What do you think now? This is as applicable to new products, but it's as applicable to any changes that are going through. So yeah. if an organization is, you know, a facelift or, or whatever, it's exactly the same process should be 
applied because ultimately that facelifted product is going to find its way into production and it's important obviously um, that the risk has been managed in the development phase such that it can make a smooth transition into production. Good so thank you for for that input so just to recap then 8.3.5.2 manufacturing uh, design output. Uh, there's nearly 500 major non-conformities been identified against this requirement. Obviously, an organization has to understand any customer-specific requirements to apply within the new product introduction process, which could be project management, it could be APQP. This requirement could apply to a brand new product that we've never manufactured before, where we have to bring in totally new manufacturing technology, but equally it could apply to a, a slightly modified product to the ones that we've made before. And I feel that that is one of the areas of weakness in many suppliers, that they just make the assumption that the product is very similar and they don't go back and review the risk in the FMEA. They don't update the control plan, etc. Mm -hmm. 